So today we're going to do one of my uh, favorite optimization problems, actually. Uh, it's the movie theater problem. Well, let me go ahead and set it up with a picture. So you're in a movie theater, and there's a 20-foot screen, right? So this is 20 feet, uh, standing 10 feet above the ground. Right? That's, that's not quite 10 feet, is it? <laughs> 10 feet above the ground. And the question is, how far back should I sit, right, so that... My viewing angle, which I'm going to call theta, that's your viewing angle. How far back should you sit so that your viewing angle is maxed? Now, I want the best viewing angle possible, right? Where should you sit in the movie theater so that you have maximal viewing angle? And so we're going to go ahead and label this x. And the goal is to find the value of x such that theta is maximized, because that's going to give us the best viewing angle for this movie experience. And if uh, once you're done with this problem, it's really cool because you can apply it to your own living room at home and you can actually find out the best place to put your couch, which is pretty cool. Um, but okay, let, let's go ahead and do all the math necessary um, to do this problem. So we, you know, when the problem's presented, this is all that we're given. We're given this picture and the, and the statement that I just gave you. Um, but it turns out that's not enough. Um, there's not enough information currently on the board to, to solve this. We, um, as we often do in these optimization problems, we have to add some of our own labels. Um, and the label that I need to add here is I need to know about this angle, right? This smaller angle, or it doesn't necessarily need to be smaller, but this, this lower angle for this lower triangle here. Um, and that lower angle, we're going to label alpha. It looks like a little fish, right? So that's my alpha right there. Okay, and so now I can start doing some right triangle trigonometry with theta and alpha and, and all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and see what we know. So starting off with just alpha, right, we can relate alpha and x pretty well using tangent. In fact, tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, that's 10 over x. Cool. Okay, so that's tangent of alpha. Um, and if you add alpha and theta together, you get this big angle. It's this really big arc, but I'm having to go far out, so what am I going to do? Um, but that, that big angle right there is alpha plus theta, and so we can look at the tangent of alpha plus theta. Let's do that. So tangent of alpha plus theta, what's that equal to? Well, that's going to be the opposite, which is 20 plus 10 feet long, which is 30 feet divided by the adjacent, which is x, so 30 over x. Okay. But remember, we don't really want to have this alpha in play. The alpha is, is more of a constraint than anything, um, or at least it's related to the constraint here. Um, but but it's, it's, it's not good. We're not, we're not equipped here to deal with that alpha as is. And also, theta is inside of a tangent, which is not really a good place to be if you're trying to optimize with respect to Sorry, optimize this with respect to this variable. It's, it's not in a good way. So um, we should fix this. And the way we're going to fix it is using the arctangent function. So the inverse of the tangent function is arctan. And we get that alpha is equal to the arctan of 10 over x. Okay. And similarly, we know that by the second guy, alpha plus theta is equal to the arctan of 30 over x. And if I take this bottom equation and subtract this top equation, alpha plus theta minus alpha, we're going to get that theta equals arctan of 30 over x minus the arctan of 10 over x. Woo, okay, cool. We have an equation for theta. Um, and it's not really going to get that much better than that. So that's, that's about as good as we're going to get for theta. Luckily, we're not looking for the max, we're not looking for the maximal value of theta. We're looking for the x that maximizes this theta. We don't really care what our viewing angle is so much that it needs to be maximal. Um, which we can accomplish. Um, in order to do that, though, we need to find some critical points for this function here. And in order to find those critical points, we need a derivative. So that's the next step. So we're going to look at d theta dx. 
So let's go ahead and calculate v theta dx. And let's see what that's going to equal. So we, at least we can do this in two parts because the derivative does play nice with plus and minus. And so we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of arctan of 30 over x. And because it's not just arctan of x, we have to use the chain rule. Um, and we'll start with the derivative of the inside. So 30 over x, that's 30 times x to the minus 1. And we're going to get the derivative of that is negative 30 over x squared. And that's going to be divided by 1 plus 30 over x squared, because that's the derivative of the outside, finishing off the chain rule, when you take the derivative of the arctan part. So the derivative of arctan, if you remember, is 1 plus 1 over x squared. Um, sorry, 1 over 1 plus x squared. I, I should write that down. There we go. The derivative of arctan of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so just what I'm doing here is I took the derivative of the inside times, which essentially just means put it in the numerator, the derivative of the outside, which is 1 plus input squared. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase that because I will need that room. Because we're going to go ahead and just uh, do the process over again. Uh, but now with arctan of 10 over x, so I'm going to get a big minus sign in the middle. And then I take the derivative of arctan of 10 over x, which it's going to be very, very similar to what we have here. So we're going to get negative 10 over x squared divided by 1 plus 10 over x squared. Okay. Okay, so this is looking pretty gnarly. We've got a lot of stacked fractions going on. I'd really like to get rid of those if possible. Um, and it turns out it absolutely is. Um, the easiest way to do it is actually just going to be to multiply top and bottom by x squared over x squared and x squared over x squared, which is fine so long as x is not equal to zero, which x is not equal, x is not equal to zero. It's definitely not equal to zero. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and just simplify that way. I'm also going to go ahead and apply these squares as we go at it. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get a simplified form of this. It's going to look like negative 30 divided by x squared plus 900 and then negative and negative make plus 10 over x squared plus 100. And again, the way I got that was by multiplying by x squared over x squared and x squared over x squared, just multiplying by 1 in a very special way to get those simplified to come out. Okay, so here we go. That's where we're at. And now comes the fun process of finding a common denominator and mashing it all together so that we can start looking for critical points. So yeah, that's going to be the next step here. So we're going to go ahead and come over to the side of the board and we're going to find our common denominator, which is just going to be these two denominators multiplied together. And that's going to equal negative 30 times x squared plus 100 plus 10 times x squared plus 900 all divided by, and then this fun expression here, x squared plus 900 times x squared plus 100. Whew. My goodness. Okay. So we really need to clean this up. This is... This is bad at the moment. It's really not good. Okay, but it will get better. Um, and here's how. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and combine our like terms. So uh, we got a negative 30x squared plus 10x squared. That's going to equal negative 20x squared. And then we're going to get negative 30 times 100. Well, that's going to be 3,000. I'm just going to write it over here. So we get a negative 3,000 when we do this times this. And then 10 times 900 is going to be positive 9,000. And if you take 9,000 minus 3,000, you get plus 6,000. Big number. And that's all over our common denominator. Okay, D 
decent amount of simplification that goes into that. Um, it went a little fast, but that's okay. You can always pause and work on it on your own time if you need to. Um, okay, so here we are. That's um, a pretty simplified form of our derivative. I don't really have room to go ahead and factor this negative 20 out, but you bet I'm going to. Um, but there we go. That's where we at so far. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of our earlier work that we don't need anymore. Um, we don't even need theta. That's, that's useless. All this stuff up top kind of not necessary. Okay, that should be enough room to finish this all off. Okay, let's see what we can do with this little expression here. So just finishing this off, we end up getting that d theta dx equals, oh, little smudges there. Uh, so we're going to factor this negative 20 out. We're going to get negative 20 times, and then we get x squared. And then we took a negative 20 out of 6,000, right? And so we're going to get a negative. That's, that's one thing that we get. And then if you take 6,000 and you divide it by 20, right? Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then you slash a 0 off from that 6,000, and you're going to get 300. And this is all divided by x squared plus 900 times x squared plus 100. So there we go. So now we, have, we can actually start the hunt for critical points. We're at a point where this is about as simplified as I'm willing to get it. We, we, I know we can factor this difference of squares, but we'll do that when we solve for the critical points. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty simplified. So there we go. Next step is to look for any places where A, the derivative fails to exist, or B equals zero. Right? And so if you look at this, there's really no spots where the derivative fails to exist. You can't get these guys to equal 0, because x squared plus 900 and x squared plus 100 are both strictly positive. And in fact, this is always greater than or equal to 900 and greater than or equal to 100, which are very, very positive numbers. So uh, those are never going to equal 0, um, So which means the only hope for getting zeros or, or you know, any critical points whatsoever is going to come from the numerator when the derivative itself equals zero. So we're gonna look at setting x squared minus 300 equals zero. And really quickly we get that x equals plus or minus the square root of 300. Ooh, big number. Okay, so one of these x's is not like the other. One of these x's is not the same. Um, and you know, obviously it's the negative one, right? In our drawing here, x is a, like a physical length, like there's a, there's a physicality to it. And this negative quantity would imply that we're somehow behind the screen somewhere, which, yeah, would give you a mirrored version of this, so that's probably why it works. But for the purposes of our problem, we're talking about an actual distance that we're supposed to sit from the screen, so that having that negative solution in there really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's, it's not a valid critical point for the kind of problem we're working on. So we get x equals the square root of 300, and then we can just simplify that. That's pretty easy to do, right? This is equal to 100 times 3. So this is going to equal 10 square root 3. And that's the answer. So 10 square root 3 feet, which is something like 17 point, I don't know, something, something, something. It's about 17 point something. <laughs> that's right. OK, so um, 10 root 3, that's our answer. And if you sit 10, root three, uh, 10 times the square root of 3, feet back from the screen, uh, you will get a maximal viewing angle. And what's kind of cool is you can take this problem and you can adapt it to your own like, you know, living room setup, where you, know, you, uh, you, you take this to be the height above the ground that your TV is, plus, oh, sorry, minus the, the height that your head is above the ground when you're sitting on the couch. That's kind of important if you really want to get maximal viewing angle here. Okay, so that, you know, that's going to be basically from your eyelids to the base of the TV. So that's what this distance needs to be. And then this is just the height of your TV screen. Right? And this is assuming, of course, that you're sitting directly in front of the screen. So if you've got family members, you may need to scoot them out of the way so that you can sit directly in front at just the right distance from the screen. Um, but now you know exactly where to position your couch. Um, you can do this problem at home. Just take a ruler and measure it all. Um, and you can optimize your own living room. It's cool stuff.